Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Spyro the Dragon. I, I, don't, I don't know why, it sounded like I was trying to make like a musical number with that. I, I don't know. But um, yeah, welcome back to more of Spyro the Dragon. Last time we entered the Peacekeeper's world. We're keeping the peace by any means necessary. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and continue our... Uh, our journey in the Peacekeeper's Realm by going to Clifftown to see if we can collect some more gems, rescue some more dragons, maybe get a dragon egg or two. We'll have to, we'll just have to see what happens here. Um, I also forgot to check and see if there was a skill point in that last level. I don't think there was, but uh, if there was, I'll have to go back and get that later. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I don't think there was, though. Like, I think that... Uh, I think I, for the most part, remember all the skill points, to the very least, where if I'd enter a level, like, I'd know, oh, hey, this is a level that has a skill point. But, um, I guess just to check to make sure, let's go ahead and just check this one out. Uh, first off, we have 400 gems yet again for this level. Only three dragons this time, but there is another dragon egg. And, okay, no, there's actually, believe it or not, um... The only other skill point for Peacekeepers will actually be at the boss, so you don't have to worry about skill points at all uh, for the rest of these, like, normal levels. So that's, that's good. That's that's reassuring, I suppose. Let's just go ahead and look around here, though. As you can see, there are some gems around here. I want to say there's something behind this building, but we can approach that from a different perspective later. Um, also, I believe, um, yeah, make sure that when you see these cauldrons, make sure you light them, because there, there can be gems inside these. It's kind of weird, there's not a lot of instances where, like, things like this will give you gems, but this is one of the exceptions, so definitely make sure to light those as you're going throughout the level, because there was definitely a time in my first playthrough where... I just forgot one of those, and I looked all over for the gem before I realized, let me try lighting all the cauldrons again, and sure enough, hey, there's the last gem I need, after looking 20 minutes for it beforehand. <laughs> I'm not bitter, what are you talking about? <laughs> nah, I, I, I could never be mad at this game. Again, I, I love this game so much. It's been a, it's been a blast playing Spyro. It's been so much of a blast. Damn it. Yeah, I guess dashing is the best way to take care of those guys. The capes. The capes! The capes of wrath! Wait, what? I know I know, grapes of wrath is a thing, but the, the capes of wrath just sounds wrong. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so there we have another... We have John Thiefman back for another rousing game of Catch Me If You Can. See, one thing that, um, whenever you're charging for an indefinite amount of time like this, um, you don't have to, like, hold the direction. I mean, you do, but you don't have to, like, hold it forward. You just have to move left or right. That was something I had to kind of learn when I was first doing these kind of charges, because I kept wanting to hold forward, but, uh, not that efficient to do that, because, uh, sometimes you can kind of lose track of your, uh, control if you do that, so just, uh... Just focus on moving the, uh, just the control stick left and right, and no other direction. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so let's open up this. Get some more, get some more fivers. But yeah, if you couldn't tell, there's different denominations for all the gems in this game. I mean, you've probably figured that out by this point. But, um... Red gems are worth one, green are worth two, uh, blues are worth five, uh, yellows are worth ten. Um, I don't think we've seen any purples yet, but there are purple ones that are worth twenty-five. And I'm sure there's there, there might be another one, another denomination, but that's much later on. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember, Spyro, flame won't work on metal, but charge it with your horns? That should do the trick. Hell yeah. <laughs> figure that out, but again, good to know for those who didn't figure that out. Okay. And 
Yep, I definitely remember. It was this cauldron right here. Had the two gems I was missing for a long time in this stage. Just because I couldn't be bothered to light it the first time. <laughs> for some reason. Not letting you get me this time. Yeah, usually for like kind of the heavy set enemies, those enemies will uh, um, usually need flames because if you try to charge into them, they'll just bounce you back. Okay, so don't get stuck, Spyro, please. <laughs> Do not get stuck. So there's a uh, crate right here. There's no key or no lock to it. So I'll have to find a way to explode that later. Which should not be a problem. Okay, I want to say we got all the cauldrons now at the very least. Let's, uh, take care of these now. Boom, boom. Boom. Did I grab that? Oh, yeah, I guess I did. I don't see it on the ground still, so I had to have gotten it, I guess. Also, another cauldron right here. Yeah, got them both. Yo, it's the Italian Inn, so... <laughs> hey, what's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? Okay, when I first heard that dragon, like, I was like, wait, is that Loxus from Fairy Tale? <laughs> it probably could be. It could be the same voice actor, because, you know, a lot of... I died again! That's unfortunate. But yeah, like a lot of anime voice actors, especially for English dubs, like you see them a lot in video games as well, so... It would not be surprising to see like, hey, a character from an anime is in a video game too. It's more common than you would think. So let's see. Got that. But yeah, I mean this is a this is a pretty big world, um, pretty big sub world compared to what we've dealt with so far. Because again, like Town Square and Dark Hollow, like those levels took like no time at all. But here, like we're you know we're, we're kind of getting on the ten minute mark, and we still haven't collected everything yet. So. Still lots of stuff we need to find. Got you. We reached the highest point in Clifftown. You can get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind over there. Oh, okay. Backseat gaming, of course. No. <laughs> it's fine. I won't, I won't punish him for that. It's a good tip. It's a good tip. I don't, I don't remember if there is anything behind that or not. But it's kind of nice. Once you reach this point, uh, they'll create a whirlwind for you so you can easily get back up here. Which is really, really nice. Really, really appreciate that. So let's see, we definitely want to go over here now. Nice landing. And we're still missing like 90 gems though, so we still have a ways to go before we're done. I, I see things though. I see, I, I see lots of things. <laughs> I see all the things. Let's go ahead and fly over here. No! Uh, I hate when I just barely miss something like that. Well, okay, you know what? Let's do this. They've, and same thing. Once you. I guess once you free the dragon or just get to this point, they'll. Uh, put a whirlwind here too which is also kind of nice uh, but over here as you can see there is a
So as you can see, over here, there is a lone firework on this platform. Um, if you light the firework... It destroys that chest, and there's a lot of gems in there, so... Who knows, that could probably be the remaining gems we need for this level. Probably not, but still... Oh, I actually forgot about some gems over here, too, so... Still need 60 more. Let's see, we got the dragon egg. I think we've gotten all the dragons by this point, so... Jump down here... That had a lot of them, but we're still missing 35. Maybe there is something behind the start. Oh no, I see some more gems over here. They look like red ones, though, so... Not exactly what we're looking for, but we needed to grab these regardless. is something behind it. The problem is there's just not really a better way to get around this. Unless we just want to like gamble and go for it, but that just seems really dumb. Okay, well let me... Again, there's got to be a section I'm missing, or a section I'm not taking accountability for. So I got all of that. Did I check all of this yet, maybe? There's an invisible wall there. I honestly feel like we can't get behind. Oh, I know. I see Jim. Okay, there is stuff behind there. I thought there was. Yeah, I thought there was. But, but will there be enough, though? That's the... Oh, yeah, there's a 25-er. Okay, we're good. That's all of them. Yeah, I just... Guess I just did not see the red gem there earlier. <laughs> so yeah, I was there the whole time. Okay, well that is going to do it for the Cliff Town. Which means we can move on to the next level. That sounds like a plan to me. You know what I just kind of realized though is that <laughs> I feel like next videos it's just going to be the boss and the... Uh, um, the flying level, so I might also do the hub world of the following level too, or the following world, just to, you know, do something else. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. Okay, so Cliff Town is completed. Let's go ahead and move on to the next level, which I believe was over here. The Ice Cavern from Ocarina of Time. Will we find the Iron Boots in here? Three gold sculptures? A heart piece? I think those are all the items you can find. <laughs> will there be will there be silver rupee puzzles, blue fire? Freezors? No. A moving block puzzle? <laughs> We just enter this level and it's just the entire ice cavern from Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you know, there is probably, there there are probably modders out there who have made, like, some kind of hack where that would actually exist. I wouldn't put it past developers these days. Uh, so while that guy is flexing, let's go ahead and look at the ice cavern. 400 gems and 5 dragons. No eggs we have to collect this time. So let's just uh, do our thing and investigate this cavern. Um, this level, from what I remember, does have like a lot of like differing paths and branching paths. So 
This could be a bit of a long level, but I'm cool with it. Word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. I get it. He just wanted to uh, flex about being big, I guess. Good for you. Good for you. We're, we're a small dragon. Kind of a, a kid dragon. And we're saving everybody, so... We know who the real hero of this game is. And it's not you. It's not you, Mr. Red Dragon Man. Also, that's another thing I wanted to bring up, kind of in regards to, like, Spyro's character. I really like Spyro's character. He just kind of seems like, almost in a sense, a little bit like Sonic, where he does kind of have, like, that, you know, bit of bit of a smug confidence. But not necessarily smug in a bad, bad way. Again, it's more, it's more of a confident light, where he's just like, yeah, I'm a little dragon, but I'm going to kick some butt and get get work done. Like, I, I like that in, like, a video game character. It's got its own charm to it and you know it's definitely something that you probably do see a lot in video games but it's it's a it's it, I don't know it's kind of a refreshing hero trait because you know you want to have that confidence when you're obviously doing something to this to this degree so it's definitely a great trait to have and I, I think he has a at least in the reignited trilogy I think he has a really good voice I'll admit uh, when I watched a uh, a playthrough of the old PS1 version. Spyro's voice was not good. <laughs> I was, uh, I was not, not pleased with that. It was kind of a, it was a voice I would have gotten very annoyed with if I listened to it long term. I, d I just wasn't a fan of it personally. I much prefer the voice he has here, honestly. Some big norks up ahead are wearing armor, and in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. Ah, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Like, icy floor? No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Slim. Don't start with the puns now. I <laughs> get wrecked. Yeah, be careful when you have uh, chests like that that are like close to the edge. You don't want to charge like right off the platform. Just do like a very quick button press. Just, just a small little charge, just to grab what you need and uh, basically be done with it. Uh, so, okay, so that's death. We don't want death. Nobody wants death. Like, let's be real. Death is bad. Death is bad and bad. Thank you for releasing me. Wow, thank you for a very short cutscene. <laughs> yep, as I said, like it gets to a point where every world has just one of those very quick cutscenes. Which, I mean, I guess it's not all bad, because again, it just kind of returns you to the game. You don't have to, like, break the pace too much, but again, like, I do like some of these, like, longer cutscenes. Especially when they give, like, a lot of the dragons more personality and stuff. It's really neat. Really neat and good. Give me all the gems in the world. I want to say this is around the point where the level kind of starts to break up into two parts, or... I don't know, maybe we've already passed that point by this point, I have no idea. It's hard to say, really. Can I grab that without... Nope! The game's gonna be a little difficult. Difficult in a inconvenient way, anyway.
And yeah, honestly, for those who are kind of looking at this game for the first time and are kind of worried, like, wow, does the platforming feel awkward? Honestly, I don't think it does. Like, that was definitely one of my fears when I started playing this game. I'm like, okay, Spyro moves a little too fast, especially when charging. Like, I'm going to fall off the level a lot. But honestly, like, I don't think that's really much of a case. Like, I think it honestly controls very well. It's just one of those things where you have to get used to it for a while, but once you do, it, it feels very nice. It feels very fluid. It's just really, really good. It's a, it's a feel-good game. <laughs> In terms of, you know, just general gameplay, I mean, obviously. I know there's people throwing snowballs at me. I want to... Take care of them first, so I don't die, and if we see any bats flying around, I need to grab them to restore Spark's health. Gah! Good. <laughs> okay. I will be back for you later. <laughs> oh god, I almost fell right into that pit. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so let's see. Uh, uh. Take that. I told you I would be back! <laughs> Take that, fool. Oh god. So we haven't found that key yet, but that's okay. What's up, Ragnar? You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? Yeah, ready for what? Tell me. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. I think he just means ready for just the general adventure. Being a hero, all that, all that good stuff. Okay, so here's the portal for home. Uh, we could rescue that dragon, but... Nah, we'll, we'll do it. Thanks for freeing me, Spyro. And now, where was I? <laughs> well, you were in the ice cavern, you were about to get the iron boots, learn the serenade of water, and uh, go to the water temple. That's what you were about to do. Then the dragon just is running in fear because it's the water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, the water temple, not that bad. Uh, let's see. Where where is the key? Like, I still need that key. So I can get that one treasure chest. That key is being quite elusive. With a capital E. Can I get up here? No fire there. I, I would say fire bad, but for a dragon that's not really true. Okay, I see gems over there. We need to head over in that direction, I'm guessing. But how do we do that? Well, there's the key. That answers one of my questions, but how do we get there? <laughs> This is what I was kind of talking about earlier with this level kind of having like a lot of branching paths. Sometimes they branch without you even realizing it. I feel like I want to go this way because this might give me a better angle for looking at where those red gems were. Indeed it does. Oh, thank God. I was worried I would not make that. Uh, so we're still missing 30 gems. I feel like the key might be a perfect indicator of where we need to go, though. Or the chest, rather. Because even though that, like, some chests have only had 10 gems, there have been other chests that have had more, so... Could be a good bet that that chest is what we need. Or what's left, rather. Just kind of annoying that we have to kind of backtrack through this cave again. But... 
It is what it is, and that is all it shall ever be. What in the world am I talking about? Well, there's a chest right there. Wait. Was it in this building this whole time? Like... Oh yeah, sure was. <laughs> it sure... Sure as hell was, Slim. It sure as hell was. Oh, I, guess, I guess I can just jump up here. Bonk. Yep, okay, 30. We're good. So, with that, we're actually done with the ice cavern. So now we can do the water temple now. Okay, I'll stop talking about Ocarina of Time. <laughs> this, this game, like the original game, did come out around the same time as Ocarina of Time. This was probably like a little bit after, I want to say, but... I'd be lying if I knew the exact date. I just I just knew the original Spyro came out in 1998. I want to say like Ocarina of Time was like in 98, maybe 97. I who knows. There's the portal. Let's get out of here. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching this video, everybody. Next time we'll take on the boss of the Peacekeepers as well as the flying stage. I'll probably do the flying stage first, and then. Uh, we got some time, we'll start working on the hub world of the next world, so... This has been a lot of fun so far, guys. I've been really enjoying this. What can I say? I love Spyro the Dragon. It's an amazing game, amazing series. And I hope you guys are enjoying watching this as well. Um, so yeah, I will uh, see you guys later. Later, folks.